Hey guys, welcome to <clears throat> the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study of the entire Bible. We are in Job chapter 19, um, and he's getting ready to respond to, um, um, who is he responding to? Um, remember his three, his three friends, he's responding to Bildad, and remember one of the statements that Bill Dad made was, how long will you keep talking? How long will you torment me with your words, right? And again, what is just kind of amazing about them is I'm trying to figure out why they're so bothered by Job. In other words, you, you come up across a person whose life was completely destroyed help they're bothered <coughs> that he is bothered um again it's just amazing let's get to it uh, <laughs> this is job's response to that to him so job now responds then job answered how long will you torment me and crush me with words right in other words back at you <laughs> okay you have, humiliate, you have humiliated me ten times now. And, and you mistreat me without shame. Now, this is absolutely true. But the, even if they thought Job was wrong, why would they why would they come so hard against him? That is what's amazing here. That even if they thought, well, Job was off. And it's not like they're talking to a criminal. Now, let's just face it. It's not like they're talking. I mean, like, for example, if they were talking to Saddam Hussein, Hitler, um, Putin. Um, I mean, and we could just kind of go on and on and on. If, if he was talking to men like that, who, and, and of course, I mean, you know, and, and, and as they kind of face their last days or sitting in jail or whatever, if people were talking to men like that and they were like, why is this happening to me? I, you could see, okay, yeah, dude, right, in each one of those cases. I mean, I, and, and they represent evil, those men that I mentioned. There were plenty of people who felt the same that went years on in their crime. And didn't get caught. You can understand. You can understand how, if you were sitting with those guys, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, um, you know, like now the many, many shooters, these mass shooters. You you got you got these mass shooters who are sitting in jail, and and and, and they could be like, oh man, you know, being in jail is just horrible, right? Being in jail is. A, but it, dude, you shot people, you murdered people, you were evil. And they're kind of responding to Job like this. Like, like, and so he goes, how long will you torment me and question me with your words? You have, you have humiliated me these 10 times now and you mistreat me without shame. Even if it is true that I have sinned, my mistakes concern only me. And this is absolutely true right here. Like, why are you guys, they are incensed that Joe will not say to them what they want him to say. Verse 5, if you really want to appear superior to me and would use my disgrace as evidence against me, then understand that it is God who has wronged me and caught me in his net. Now, this statement here, when he says, God has wronged me. God is going to address that. But it is kind of interesting that, remember, God himself was the one who said that you have incited me. He said this to Satan in, in, in Job 2. You have incited me to, move, to destroy Job without cause. Now, um, God never said he was wrong in that because, again, God could do as he pleased with his creation. 
So his thing is that God has wronged me and caught me in his net. In other words, so what does that have to do with you? Why are you upset? I cry out violence, but it, but get no response. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has blocked my way so that I cannot pass through. He has veiled my path with darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He, he tears me down on every side so that I can so that I am ruined. He uproots my, uproot, uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. Now, first of all, God was in anger. See, again, Job is speaking without knowledge himself, right? Because God wasn't angry. God didn't do this out of anger. God didn't do this because he was wrong. God did this simply to show, hey, I'm going to prove that, that, that Job's uh, integrity is solid. Verse 7, he, he, his anger burns against me, and he regards me as one of his enemies. Not true. Uh, his troops advance together. They construct a ramp against me and his camp and camp around my tent. Oh, come on. Okay. He has removed my brothers from me, and my, uh, and my acquaintance have abandoned me. Okay. Um, I gotta, let's see, my, again, my screen here has frozen up. What, what is going on, computer? Okay. My computer has frozen up, guys. All right. All right, let me do this then. Uh, <laughs> uh. I am going to just read because I can't my, my computer until my computer's frozen up. So let me just read do it this right here. I'm gonna read from here. Okay, there we go. It's coming back again. Uh oh ho ho. Oh. oh. Alright. It's back. Just a little bit. Okay. It's still frozen up. Okay. Let me do this then. Let me come out of this until it goes. I'm going to be reading from this in here. Okay. All right. All right. So um, I'm reading from my iPad here, guys. All right. Um, Verse 13, he says, he has removed my brothers from me. My acquaintance ha, um, have abandoned me. Um, my relatives stopped coming by. And my close friends have forgotten me. Now, it's kind of interesting that he was the talk of the town. People would seek out his counsel. But now that he is... Um, in a bad way, no one calls. And again, this is true, right? This is kind of life right here. If you was to, you could be the talk of the town right now, but then as soon as you are out of sight, you're out of mind, you know? Verse 15. Uh, my house guests and female servants regard me as a stranger, and I am a foreign, foreigner in their sights. I call for my servant, but he does not answer. Even if I beg him with my own mouth, my breath is offensive to my wife and my own family finds me repulsive even the young boys scorn me when i stand up they mock me all of my best friends despise me hint hint you guys and those i love have turned against me now most of the most of all he just feels this way even though these three guys have been going in on him it's my skin and my flesh cling to my bones i have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Now remember, you ever hear that term? Yeah, I escape by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, my friends. Have mercy on me, for God has struck me. Now this is probably one of the worst things that Job could say. Have mercy on me, my friends. Man does not, man is worse. He feels abandoned by God, but man is worse. Um, he says, why do you persecute me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? I wish that my words were written down. 
Hmm, actually, Job, <laughs> they will be and preserved for thousands of years, right? Verse 23, I wish that my words were written down, that they were recorded on a scroll or inscribed in stone forever by the iron stylus and lead. But now, but I know uh, my living Redeemer, and he will stand on the dust at last. Even after my skin had been destroyed, yet I will see God in my flesh. I will see him myself. My eyes uh, will look at him and not a stranger. And my heart longs with me. If you say, how will he uh, pursue him? Since the root of his problem lies with me, then be afraid of the sword so that you may know that there is judgment. Um, now, so far, the Nemite replied. So now his turn again. Remember, you got three friends that's sitting around Job here. And um, let me see if my uh, thing has come back up here. Uh, let's see here. All right. All right, where are you at here? Uh, okay, here we go. Where am I at? I'm at Job 20. All right. All right. All right, guys. I guess acting right for a moment, but I have my iPad on standby. Okay. Um. Then, uh, though far, then I replied, this is why my unsettling thoughts compel me to answer, because I am upset, right? I'm upset. I have heard a rebuke that insults me, and my understanding makes me reply, don't you know that ever since antiquity, from the time man was placed on the earth, the joy of the wicked has been breathed? Now, remember, he's putting the wicked in the same category of Job. And the happiness of the godless has lasted only a moment, though his arrogance reaches heaven and his head touches the cloud. Now, again, this is not necessarily true about the wicked, right? Uh, I remember seeing people who, who have fled in, in Nazi Germany, some of these soldiers and these generals and lived in South America. And when they caught them, they were like 89 years old, okay? Um, there was a lady by the, remember the Emmett, the lady who was involved in the Emmett Till murder? She's still alive, okay? So anyway, uh, just, okay, verse six. Though his arrogant reaches heaven and his head touches the cloud, he will vanish forever like his own dung. Those who know him will ask, where is he? He will fly away like a dream and never be found. He will be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye that saw him will see him no more, and his household would no longer see him. His children will beg from the poor from his, for his land, for his own hand must give back his wealth. His bones may be full of youthful vigor, but will lie down with him in the grave. Now, actually, their own words are kind of are, are not true. Job is kind of an older man. Remember, he's been enjoying life up until this time. So what are they talking about? He's been he's been enjoying life, you know. Uh, all right. So though he cherishes, um, though evil tastes sweet in his mouth, and he conceals it under his tongue, though he cherishes it with um, and will not let it go, but keeps it in his mouth. Yet the food of his stomach turns into cobra venom inside him. He swallows wealth but must vomit it up. God will force him, force it from his stomach, and he will strike him, and, and he will suck the poison of cobras. Viper fangs will kill him. He will not enjoy the streams of rivers flowing with honey and cream. He must return the fruit of his labor without consuming it. He doesn't enjoy the profits from his trading, for he, for he, for he oppressed and abandoned the poor. He sees a house and did not build it. Now, if you remember, they actually remember said in the beginning, Job, you've done all these things, and now that the suffering is happening to you, you're crying like a baby, kind of like that. 
Verse 20, because his appetite is never satisfied. He doesn't let anything he desires escape. Nothing is left for him to consume. Therefore, his prosperity will not last. At the height of his success, distress will come to him and a full weight of misery will crush him when he fills his stomach. God will send his burning anger against him, raining down on him while he is eating. He, if he flees from an iron weapon, an arrow from a bronze bow will pierce him. He pulls it out of his back, the flashing tip of the flashing tip out of his liver. Terror comes over him. Total darkness is reserved for treasures. A fire, a fire unfanned by human hands will consume him. It will feed. It will feed him. Um, let's see. It will feed what is left of him. The heavens will expose his iniquity, and the earth will rise. And the earth will rise. Um, sorry, will rise. Uh, where am I at here? Oh. Oh, do, do, do. The heavens will expose his iniquity, and the earth will rise against him. The possession in his house will be removed, flowing away on the day of God's anger. This is the wicked man's lot from God. The inheritance um, will reward him. Um, okay. <laughs> Job's reply. This is going to be a short one here. This is going to be sort of a short reply to him. Normally, Job's replies are a lot longer, but here you go. Then Job answered. Verse 20, chapter 21, verse 1. Pay close attention to my words. Let this be the consolation you offer. Right? Now, I can't, I can't help but do you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Okay? <laughs> Pay close attention to my words. Let this be the consolation that you offer. Bear with me while I speak. Then after I have spoken, you may continue mocking. Now, of course, he's clapping back at them, right? As for me, is my complaint against man a man? Then why shouldn't I be impatient? Look at me and shudder. Put your hands over your mouth. When I think about it, I am terrified and my body trembles in horror. Why did... Why did the wicked continue to live, growing old and becoming powerful? Now, again, remember, when you're suffering, the world always seems like you're, you're, you're kind of alone. And when you look at stuff, it's like, okay, because you're seeing things through the eyes of your pain. And it always seems like no one else is suffering when a lot of other people are suffering. And, of course, Job's suffering is unique in that he is not suffering because he did anything wrong, but because God... Is proving his integrity. Verse 6. When I think about it, I am terrified and my body trembles in heart. Why did the wicked continue to live, growing old and becoming powerful? Right? Their children are established while they are still alive, and their descendants before their eyes. Their homes secure and free from fear. No rod from God strikes them. Now, he doesn't know that because we don't always know what is going on. Uh, in any one particular life, right? For example, I can tell you right now, I can, I don't know what's going on with, with my neighbor's wife or neighbor's, I mean, life, was what I meant to say. Um, I don't know what's going on with them until all of a sudden I might see an ambulance where I pull up and I go, oh my God, what is going on there? All right, so, um, verse 10, um, I meant to say ambulance, but not ambulance. Anyway, verse 10, there are, their bull breeds without fail. Their cows, um, calves, do not miscarry. They let the little ones run around like lambs. The children skip about, singing to the tamarind and lyre and rejoicing at the sound of the flute. They spend their days in prosperity and they go down to Sheol in peace. Now, this is the way it looks because he's suffering. Now, remember, he didn't say that before during the days, right, when he was prospering. You know, he didn't say, well, look at all the how prosperous the wicked is. I mean, remember, too, this happened later in his life, right? He, in his 60s, his 70s or 80s, whatever like that. This happened later in his life. Okay, so he enjoyed wealth for a long time. Yet... 
they say to God, leave us alone. We don't want to know your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what will we gain by pleading with him? But their prosperity is not of their own doing. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is a lamp of the wicked put out? And does disaster come upon them? See, again, this is kind of his perspective. It comes on them a lot. He just don't see it. Does um, he apportion destruction in his anger? Are they like the straw before the wind, like chaff, um, like chaff, a storm sweeps away? God preserve the person's punishment for his children. Let God repay the person himself so that he may know it. Let his own eyes see his demise. Let him drink from the Almighty's wrath. For what does he care about? For, for what does he care about his family once he is dead? In other words, he's basically saying uh, when the number of his months has run out. In other words, don't don't let him suffer when he dies. Let him let him feel the pain while he is alive. Let him feel the pain of his wickedness while he is alive. Can anyone teach God knowledge since he judges and exalts exalted ones? One person dies in excellent health, completely secure and at ease. His body is well fed and his bones are full of marrow. Yet another person dies with a bitter soul, having never tasted prosperity. They both lie in the dust and worms cover them. I know your thoughts very well, the schemes you would the, uh, the schemes you would wrong me with, but you say, where now is the nobleman's house, and where are the tents, uh, and where are the tents the wicked live in? Have you never consulted those who travel the roads? Don't you accept their reports? Indeed, the evil man is spared from the day of disaster, rescued from the day of wrath. Now again, this is from its perspective. It's not necessarily true. Who would denounce his behavior to his face? Who would repay him for what he has done? He is carried to the grave and someone keeps watch over his tomb. The dirt on his grave is sweet to him and everyone follows behind him. And those who go from and those who go before him are without numbers. So how can so how can you offer me such fruitful comfort? Your answers are deceptive. So again, he is right, of course, uh, about his friends. He is absolutely right about his friends. They are miserable com comforters because they're speaking what they don't know. All right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. See you in the next study.